In the world of fine spirits, it may be the best kept secret. Pisco, the clear brandy that Peruvians have kept to themselves for 450 years, is finally reaching a global audience. Through the popularity of the refreshing Pisco Sour, a lime-laced drink known in bars everywhere, Pisco is enjoying some well-deserved fame. But as Peruvians know, this sophisticated brandy is far more than just a mixer. Johnny Schuler is the president of the Pisco Tasters Guild and widely considered to be the world's leading expert. According to Schuler, Peruvians owe this beloved beverage to the requirements of the Catholic Church. The story of Pisco begins with the arrival of the Spanish monks, the priests. That's where it all begins. Why? Because the conquistadores came looking for gold and the different missionaries, Franciscans, Dominicos, uh, Jesuitas, Mercedarios, looking for souls. And to their surprise, when they arrived in America, they found that there was no grape. Having no grape in America, there was no wine. No wine, no mass on Sunday. Right? So the crown had to book a huge price for the first subject of the Spanish crown who would actually produce wine because the church needed wine. From behind the bar at Lima's Malabar restaurant, known for its Pisco selection, Johnny Schuler clarifies the differences in styles. We, we separate, we classify it in four different categories. That's why Chaffee put here four bottles of Pisco. Mainly we have Pisco's made of, made of non-aromatic grapes, which are four, Quebranta, Negra Criolla, Mollar, and Uvina, and four that are the aromatic grapes, which are all muscats, which is in Spanish, in Peru, we call them Italia, Torontel, Moscatel, and Albilla. These eight grapes make these four types of Pisco. So the third category is the blend of these. This is what we call acholado. Acholado is our expression to blend a pisco. Right? That's the third category. The fourth category is called mosto verde. It's a very difficult explication of mosto. Mosto means must, the fermented juice of wine, right? To the fresh must. And verde means green, of course. Pisco first, we have to make a big difference. It's not a grappa. Pisco is not made from pomace. Pomace is the skins, the stems, which is what grappa is made of. Pisco is a brandy. Pisco is made from wine, like cognac or like armagnac. They press the grapes, they make that juice, they turn it into wine, and the leftover is what they distill, referment, distill, and make their grappa which is good, it's, nobody is complaining, right? It's, it's a good stuff. <laughs> but what we do is we press the juice, we make the wine, and it's the wine that we take to the still, right? Freshly fermented wine, which only cognac and armagnac and brandy de Jerez do. So we are the four in a different category. The producer, he has waits until his sugar count is down to zero. He is transformed by the effect of the yeast, all the sugar, into potential alcohol, right? Which is the miracle of, of, of the fermentation, no? The fermentation. So he's fermented and completely down to zero. There's no sugar, residual sugar in the must, so the wine is ready. Zero, dry. In this case, the must, the wine is sweet when it goes to the still. This means that in this case, we're using six kilos of grapes per bottle. Here, we're using 10 kilos of grapes per bottle because we haven't waited until all the sugar has been converted. But this makes not only a more expensive Pisco because of the more ma material. material, more grapes you need, but it gives it, it comes into the mouth with, with body, with texture, with roundness. You know? Really smooth, really fantastic.